lipstick on the teeth. All right, so today is the very first foundation Friday on my channel. Hope you guys are excited. I'm excited. If you missed kind of the overview of all of this, go watch the best and worst of 15 days of foundation video. Kind of walks through what I'm doing with 15 days of foundation and also foundation Friday, but basically every single Friday on my channel, we're gonna have a first impression foundation review, which I'm so excited about because I love trying out new foundations. These are some of my favorite videos to make and I know they're some of your guys' favorite to watch, hopefully. So I had you guys vote on Snapchat by screenshotting the foundation that you wanna see, and it was between this and the CoverGirl BB Cream. So the CoverGirl BB Cream will probably be next week, but this one won by over double. Did I even say what this is? This is the Urban Decay All Nighter Waterproof Longwear Liquid Foundation. This is brand new from Urban Decay. This was supposed to release in the fall, but I think there was so much hype on social media of this that they released it early. You can now find this on Sephora and on the Urban Decay website. And I have the shade 0.5. If you watch 15 Days of Foundation, you know that the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation was one of my favorites. I'm gonna link that playlist down below if you missed it. So when I saw that they came out with a full coverage foundation, I was pumped. So let's find some of the claims. So this foundation retails for $40. It comes in 24 shades and there is one fluid ounce of product in here. That's pretty standard for foundation. I like that they have a nice shade range. It does look like there's some nice deeper shades as well as fair shades. Okay, so swatch time. Right here we have the Urban Decay All Nighter in 0.5. This is Urban Decay Naked in 0.5. This is Tarte Rain Forest of the Sea in the lightest shade. Makeup Forever Ultra HD Y205. Kat Von D Locket Tattoo Foundation L42. And Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless 110. Wow, they have a very intense product description on the Urban Decay website of this. Full coverage with a modern matte finish that never looks overdone. Serious long lasting wear, perfect for all night affairs. And other scandalous activities is literally what they say on the website. It says, while well, naked skin complexion products are demi matte, the all nighter liquid foundation is completely matte. So they say that this foundation has about three times as much pigment as the Urban Decay Naked foundation. It's supposed to mattify and absorb oil to reduce the appearance of shine. It's waterproof and paraben free. So that is pretty much much all of the claims if you guys are excited about 15 days of foundation 15 days if you guys are excited about foundation friday give this video a thumbs up let me know down below what foundations you want to see next week so if you want to see how this foundation applies and wears throughout the day you're in the right place just keep watching Whew. Took like three cups of coffee to get me going this morning. So I have combination skin with cystic acne. This is a decent skin week for me. I do have some big breakouts coming in down on my chin. So I have the foundation here. I'm so excited to try this. I have the shade 0.5, which I probably already told you in the intro. And this bottle is just gorgeous and it has a pump. Like we did during all the reviews during 15 days of foundation, I'm gonna do the brush on one side of my face and then a sponge on the other side of my face to see if there's a difference in application. I've washed, moisturized, and primed my face already. I use the Cover FX, what is that one called? It has like salicylic acid in it. It's one of the only primers that doesn't break me out. I'll link the exact one down below. So it actually looks a little bit runnier than I was expecting. You can see it gliding down the palette. So I'm just gonna start by stippling some of this on and blending out. And this is supposed to be a matte foundation which I usually don't, ooh, this has good coverage. Whoa, okay. I usually don't uh, reach for matte foundations too often just cause I like a little bit more of a skin like finish, but I am getting pretty oily throughout the day since it's summer and it's freaking hot. Everyone thinks Seattle it's cold, but in the summer it does get like high 80s and 90s sometimes. And we don't have AC because no one is used to having heat in Seattle. First initial impressions, it's actually a nice finish. It's more of like a satin matte finish. You can still see the light reflecting off it a little bit. Really great coverage. I don't feel like I need to layer this because I got pretty damn good coverage. For a matte foundation, I really like the way that that applied so far. I think I put one pump of foundation on here and I haven't even used half of this yet, which rocks. Matching my neck pretty well. It's looking a little bit textured on my forehead with the brush, especially right in the center of my face. Isn't majorly clinging to dry patches, but I can see the foundation on my forehead. So let's go in with the sponge on the other side. I've never used this sponge. This is one of the new Morphe sponges. So let's just pounce. Let me know in the comments down below what foundations you guys wanna see during Foundation Friday. I have a bunch that we didn't get to for 15 days of foundation. Okay, so this is applying a lot more sheer with the sponge. For me and the kind of coverage I like, I think I like the brush side a little bit better. Both sides look really nice. This one just looks a little bit lighter coverage 
and I did use more product with the sponge. I'm gonna finish off my forehead with the sponge though just to see if it looks less textured up there. This sponge too could just be soaking up a lot of product since I haven't used this one yet. Yeah, I definitely like the side with the brush better. So I have used up all of the product for my full face, which rocks I usually can't get away with a single pump for my full face. I'm gonna go in, oh, I just put way too much on. Why did I do that? I just need a tiny bit of this. I don't know why I just pumped a whole thing. I'm gonna go in and just cover up some of the spots over here with the brush. Foundation goes so far with a brush. You seriously need the tiniest bit. Putting a tiny bit more on my forehead. And I feel like it's pretty rare for me when I feel like I don't need a second layer. Just to clarify, because now that I'm editing this back, this sounds kind of confusing, I only put a second layer on the side that I applied the sponge just to even out my face so it looked like the same kind of coverage that I got with the brush. I applied my full face with the brush. I definitely would not need a second layer. I only added a little bit more coverage on this side of my face. Didn't touch this side. So let's do a close up so you can see how it's sitting on my face. Really nice coverage. Still looks like a satin matte finish to me. It doesn't look totally matte, which I like. The forehead doesn't look bad textured, it just doesn't look quite as invisible as some of the other foundations I own. It looks a little bit heavy around my pore area right here, and it is a little bit like crusty around my nose right here. I'm gonna go with the sponge without product and see if I can kind of even that out. Okay, that just like took away some product. Do you guys see that? Okay, this is like pretty much totally set, which is great. Since this is a matte long wear foundation and it feels like it's pretty much set, I'm not gonna set this with the powder. I am gonna use a setting spray though because I use that every single day. So I'm gonna apply the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Okay, so it is 8.52, let's call it 9 a.m. and the rest of my makeup is on, clearly. On my lips is ABH Milkshake with a little bit of the ColourPop Lip Gloss, their new Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Fairy Floss. Blush bronzer highlight blended out beautifully on top of it. I didn't have to set it with a powder at all, which I love. I love just being able to put on a foundation, blend out your powder products without having it like cling to weird patches and stuff. The finish of the foundation definitely doesn't look totally matte to me. I think it's a perfect satin finish. My forehead does look more on the dewy side, but again, these lights reflect off my face, so it makes everything look a little bit more shiny. So far, I don't have any complaints. I was looking at it up close before and it looks really nice. I'm getting a tiny bit of creasing around this area, so I hope that doesn't get worse, but yeah, no complaints so far. I'm headed to the chiropractor right now, so I'm really hoping he doesn't put me like face down in the cradle, but if he does, I guess we'll see how this foundation lasts. Okay, so it's now 2.11, so the foundation's been on for five hours, and I've been out pretty much most of the day, and I've gotta say, it looks freaking bomb in natural lighting. It looks pretty natural, especially for being a matte finish, but it still gives you coverage. The only area that doesn't look too great is around my upper lip and nose area, which is usually kind of my problem area. It's where my foundation tends to crease a little bit. I don't have the same expression lines I usually do. They're in like weird different places, but I don't think it's anything too horrible. Blush bronzer highlight is still fully on. Forehead looks good, not super matte though. Like I can definitely see my oil coming through a little bit. Not a whole lot is actually coming off on my finger. It's just kind of looks a little bit dewy, which I don't mind. I did change my lip color. It's the Makeup Forever C502 lipstick. Look at this purple shade. I feel like when I finally have silver hair, the shade will be great. All right, so I will wear this for a few more hours and check back in at the end of the night. It is now 10, 12 p.m., so the foundation has been on for 13 hours. I think this is the longest first impression check-in thing I've ever done. I couldn't get a shot in natural lighting because I ended up going to the beach. I thought I was gonna be back before now, but I just got home. So based on how it looks right now on my forehead area and around my nose, this is from my sunglasses. I usually get really bad sunglass lines, but these are pretty intense. They went all the way down here. It's pretty much totally worn off on my forehead right now. I didn't even go in the water, it was just really hot. So I wouldn't say this is like super sweat proof or for like super hot weather, but also this was without a setting powder. I feel like the rest of my face looks pretty good for 13 hours without a setting powder. I did look at my face around the eight or nine hour mark, like before I went to the beach, and it looked pretty dang good. It did oxidize looking at it compared to my chest. It's a tad dark, but it doesn't look super orange on me or anything. I am excited about this one for a couple of reasons. One, I'm really happy that for an everyday foundation, like where I'm not gonna be going to the beach or like massively sweating, 
I really like that I didn't feel like I needed to use a setting powder even at about the eight hour mark it still looked really good without a setting powder I like that it wasn't super super matte you can still see like the look of my skin coming through it just the way that it applied and the fact that it got such good coverage just in one thin layer. I didn't have to use a lot of this at all in comparison to how much I use of some other foundations. If you have dry skin, it isn't the most moisturizing foundation. I would probably say go with Tarte Rainforest of the Sea over this one if you have dry skin. But if you're like me and you have combo skin or you're more on the oily side, I think this one is worth giving a go if you like that full coverage. I like this one. I definitely will be wearing this again. Probably be trying it out with like the cover effects illuminating drops or something, but I do really like this one on its own and I feel like that's pretty rare for me to find a foundation without a powder just on its own. I feel like it does a good enough job. I don't have to mix it in with anything. Shade-wise is good. If you guys like this video and are excited about Foundation Fridays, give it a thumbs up. You can always follow me on Snapchat if you want to partake in the voting process. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Oh.